Hi there, friends. We've had a lot of frequently asked questions about Choice Grid, so we thought we'd do some of these little FAQ clips just to help you out. So uh, the question we've been getting the most is, can I have a copy? And when Mel and I first uh, talked about this, our idea was really to share and hope that friends could remix it, share it, curate, um, use them any way they can. So definitely, uh, we'd love for you to share. And we're so glad that you're sharing back with us, which is awesome. So the follow-up question to that is now, how do I have a copy? And there's a couple ways that you can take the grids and bring them into your classroom environments or learning environments. Um, and we're gonna walk through a couple of those. So the first thing first, if you wanted to take a whole section, like maybe I really like the forest of reading, my students, uh, this is something we've been talking about. So I can actually take that whole link to that Forest of Reading page and bring it into my learning environment. So of course I could just drop the link in, but if you are using a Google site, um, usually it pops up to insert on the right hand side panel. But if I go to pages, we're used to these pieces where I can create a page, but you can also add a page from a link. And why would I do that? That's because it adds another tab for this area. Um, so it really becomes part of my menu. So now it's not just a button on a page, but as my kids uh, come into my environment, I can actually click on Force of Reading and it looks like it's a uh, connection there. So it's an easy way uh, to bring that in. Now that being said, uh, I may not want to bring the whole site in because this is all about curation and guided choice, um, giving students that freedom to have diversity uh, and differentiation, but also um, not making it feel overwhelming. So maybe I want to grab Mustafa because we've read the book and this would be a great way to continue the learning. So I want to grab just the link for this uh, choice grid. So if I use the full screen play button in the right hand corner, each grid will have that. And it's a typical symbol we see when we embed in a Google site. So I can upload that. Now I can get the link for just that choice grid. So now I can get this link um, and I can bring that in. So that being said, sometimes though you want um, to use the examples that we've created as your starting off points. So remember there's the templates page and Mel's set it up so awesome that if you go in, it's automatically going to force you to make a copy. So you get your own version of it. Now, if there's something you wanna tweak, um, especially something from Mel and I, uh, so maybe you've come in and saw our present, our creation, uh, create a game grid this week. I don't know why the words are failing me right now. Uh, and you have a couple different ideas you wanna add in. You know your friends are really big scratch fans so you wanna put more scratch options in. So um, once it loads, it feels like everybody in my condo is online right now. So once I have my grid, again, I can do my full screen option. And once I'm in full screen, I can uh, actually bring this into my editor. So one of the things you're gonna see on the bottom in full screen mode is that little presentation toolbar. And at the end of the presentation toolbar, we have our gear. And that gear gives me a bunch of different options, including open editor. So that gets us out of preview mode and into slides. Again, not something our kids need to see necessarily because we want them to be able to go straight into clicking, uh, but for us, helpful as we go to edit. I'm just gonna change uh, my person here so that you see it from a different user, sorry. So as I um, open it, because I'm not the creator this time around, I see that it's only, it's uh, locked down, it's in view only. So I won't be able to edit this. That's a good thing because uh, we don't want things to be easily changed, but somebody maybe wants to make a copy of it. So I can go file, make a copy, and you can choose either option because we only have one slide. I just go entire presentation to make it easy. 
this is actually version three for me. And I'm going to say, okay. This means now I have my own version of this choice grid and I can make those tweaks and changes. Just a reminder that we have transparent shapes on all of these, so it will be hard to edit till I move them out of the way. So one little trick as it's loading and as we chat is I can click on a transparent shape and I can hold the shift button down and keep clicking till I have all of my transparent shapes selected. And once all my transparent shapes are selected, I can move them off to the side and do my editing. Now, once I'm ready, I'll right click on those guys. I'll make sure that they're brought to the front and I'll move them back over. So we hope that gives you a couple different ideas of how you can share, um, remix and copy uh, some of the grids that we've been sharing. Just a reminder that it's always great to model that fair use um, and to give credit when you're sharing, especially if you're sharing um, some of our colleagues that have been kind enough to share. Send them a little uh, tweet, tag them in a tweet, uh, tag them on the bottom. But giving credit is always a, a great way to model that fair use um, as educators. So we know there's a lot more questions out there, especially around images and bitmojis, um, around the transparent shapes, around um, linking um, graphic organizers and the likes. So we'll be taking all those questions um, and there'll be a couple opportunities this week to continue learning